Tonga, aka Haku or Meng. What is it that made him a seemingly invincible, unstoppable and brutal fighting machine? But yeah, I can come right into your living room and pull you out. Hear me? Who is the greatest badass in, in your opinion? Haku, <laughs> for sure. This is a man who was more than capable of beating six men at once. And as well go to hell because he's unbelievable. I've seen him uh, guys by the throat like this. They were both feigning and then a kick there, a kick there. He had six guys laying down in the bar, you know. When asked how tough he is, Jake the Snake Roberts answered with this. If I had a gun and was sitting inside a tank with one shell left and Meng is 300 yards away, He's mine, right? Well, the first thing I'm gonna do is jump out of the tank and shoot myself because I don't want to wound that son of a bitch and have him pissed off at me. And how do I think some of our British tough guys, like legendary street fighter Lenny McLean, or Wales' hardest man and brutal street fighter Malcolm Price, would fare against Tonga? And what about Gary Spires, a man who I rate as top of the tree when it comes to self-defense and brutally effective fighting tactics, who wins that fight? And a question that I got asked a lot on my last Tonga video was who would win a prime Mike Tyson against Tonga? Arn Anderson once said, there are three types of men. There are tough men, there's wrestling tough men, and then there's men. So what is it that made Tonga such a dangerous fighter? Since I made my first video of Tonga, I've wanted to learn a lot more about him and how and why he was such a formidable fighter. His strength is legendary. He was 300 pounds, around 21 stone, and was said to have unbelievable power. He could throw another 300 pound man across the room like it was nothing. And that was Haku. You gotta remember, Haku trained uh, sumo, so he knew the center of balance. He practiced those punches like they do over there, uh, practicing on the uh, poles, those real quick punches. He had those big legs he could kick above his head right in your face, right there. And he was fast as a gazelle. And he was a 300 pound man. Mm. A incredible athlete, incredible person, and just tough as nails, tough. He was also very flexible and supple for a man that size. He was able to kick above his head and he could kick the huge seven foot big show's head height. So then we have his fight training and his skills. He had a background in martial arts and sumo. He did sumo in Japan. All of a sudden, he gets his, the head guy down from whatever gang they were, and he went like that. And bro, he had his finger behind the guy's eye and told him, said, brother, I'm going to eat that eyeball if you don't stop. Tell your boys to stop. Which kind of pretty much, I don't want to say saved all our butts, but we didn't really have to do anything. If there's anybody in the wrestling business that would never I want to have to fight, it would be Haku. Right. And in 1976, he was actually sent by the king of Tonga, to study sumo in Japan, alongside his friend Sioni, who would later go on to become the Barbarian. Barbarian was also another serious real life fighter with immense size and power and respected by everyone on the wrestling circuit. Here he is training with Lee Haney. Another attribute to Tonga's fighting ability was his speed. Tonga was very fast, especially with speedy chops and punches, which at 300 pounds is gonna really hurt. Then we have his mental strength and his ability to withstand pain. He has super tough, thick looking skin and it looks like your punches will just bounce straight off of him. Hako's in his own league. He is in his own category. He's an incredible athlete. He was 300 pound tank. Didn't feel any pain. He had no fear of anyone and seemingly no fear of getting injured and he was seeing total confidence in his ability. Tonga, yeah, Tonga-san, yeah. yeah. That is a scary human being, but he's also the nicest guy in the world. Man, he would give you the shirt off his back and give you, your, give you his pants and his shoes, you know, and he'd go, he would go home naked just, <laughs> just to make sure you, you were happy, you were comfortable, you know? Don Fry there, summing up Tonga, and also showing why I respect Tonga so much. Not purely on his fighting ability, but because he was such a lovely person with a big heart. 
sort of dreaded for quite some time because you've been described by your peers as the the most toughest, the, the the most legitimate fighter in history. What is that like being called that by so many of your wrestling peers? <laughs> Thank you. I, I, I guess I should say I appreciate that they honour me with that. He doesn't go looking for trouble, but if he has to defend himself, he will become your worst nightmare. And then Barbarian would survive. He might be the only one Tonga didn't kill, kill, but none of us would stand a chance against Ming. Okay. <laughs> they wouldn't stand a chance against him. And he's the nicest guy in the world, too. Right. Polite, friendly, loving, happy. Mm -hmm. And he would literally kill every one of us in the blink of an eye, and there wouldn't be nothing we could do about it. And he also never likes to talk about his legendary bar fights and all those exploits, and he never brags about it and never shows off. He's very humble. So even though everyone says he is the sweetest guy, the nicest guy, but he can be the most dangerous guy when he's pushed or provoked. Having drunken guys racially attack him, physically attack him. He would use brutal tactics then to end the fights. Eyes being gouged, nose is being bitten, ears being bitten. Remember, there are no rules in street fights. So we got a guy beat you then, 10 grand. Well, I'll put the 10 grand, well, I'll put 10 grand up. And I'll beat him. Right. And, uh, but and what's just, the oh, rules of street fighting? No rules. I'll kill you stone dead. Oh, that's the rule. <laughs> so we have some legendary street fighters in Britain. I've chosen two. These two came straight to mind. Lenny McLean. A powerful, brutal enforcer. Doorman, street fighter, bare knuckle fighter. Known as one of the hardest men in Britain. But Lenny was predominantly a puncher. His biggest strength was his punch speed and power and Lenny would be a formidable opponent on the street. Lenny would also use the brutal tactics that Tonga would use, like eye gouging and biting. Listen, never, I've never, never, I've never lost a fight on a couple. No, 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 you haven't lost, but I've you got Say we're having a fight, you shave out, right? Right. 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 right? But when you're up against someone like Tonga, who can not only punch, but grapple, wrestle, use choke holds, and would bite your nose off and pull your eye out, then the odds are really stacked against the boxer, in this case, Lenny. I believe, especially once it becomes a wrestling match. Now, this is only my opinion. I know a lot of people may favor Lenny, but bear in mind that we know Lenny can be hurt because he was knocked out in five of his 12 unlicensed boxing matches. And as far as I'm aware, Tonga has never even been remotely hurt or even close to being hurt. So I'd have to go with Tonga on that one. But let me know what you think in the comments section. So Malcolm Price, the hardest man in Wales, another brutal street fighter who would bite, eye gouge and use anything that came to hand. Plus he could punch, having a brief undefeated professional boxing career. And I've also never heard of Malcolm Price losing a street fight either. And I know Malcolm Price in a, in a street fight was ferocious and would do anything to win. Now I think Malcolm Price at his biggest was around 18 stone or 260 pounds. So you've got to give the size advantage there to Tonga, who was 300 pounds plus. And once again, Malcolm's primary weapons are his fists, his head and biting and gouging the eyes. But once again, I think Tonga would be too much, too big, too strong. With the added skill of martial arts, sumo wrestling, kicking, chokes, etc. So prime Mike Tyson versus Tonga, question I get asked a lot. So a lot of people would possibly think Mike Tyson would KO Tonga, but remember a few things. There are people that can withstand these big punches. Holyfield stood up to Mike Tyson's power. So did Tony Tucker. So did Bone Crusher Smith, James Quick Tillis and others. I've no doubt Granite Chin David Tua, Merciless Ray Mercer, Oliver the Atomic Bull McCall and James Lights Out Tony would also stand up to Mike Tyson's power. So Tonga could very well be able to withstand Mike Tyson's punches. Tonga also has the advantage of being able to kick so imagine Mike Tyson trying to get close to punch, but getting kicked in the head, chest or legs. Then we have the fact that most street fights, normally after the initial punching, end up in a grappling match or end up on the floor. So a 220 pound Mike Tyson stuck in a wrestling match with a 300 pound Tonga is definitely not gonna end well for Mike Tyson. So in my opinion, the odds are stacked towards Tonga to win that. So on to Gary Spires. Legendary fighter, doorman and bodyguard of New Zealand heritage but came to Britain and settled in Liverpool. Gary became a world-renowned martial arts expert 
and created his own form of karate, which was adapted for realistic self-defense situations. Now, the difference in this one is that Gary was not only a brutally effective street fighter, knowing all of the vulnerable areas to instantly immobilize an opponent, such as groin strikes, throat strikes, attacking the eyes and ears, but he was also proficient with locks and chokes, but he was also trained in various martial arts and fighting styles, including wrestling, judo, karate, jiu-jitsu, and boxing. Gary was also a big man at 270 pounds, very strong, and would fight through pain and injuries. He's even fought on through a knife attack, which saw the knife blade going straight through his face. All right, so this is a tough fight to call for sure. Two extremely tough men, both multi-skilled, both strong, both brave and game, both extremely well versed in the brutal side of street fighting. Yeah, so Coming out here and start throwing punches at my son, yeah. Tamatonga. No way that anybody will come and take any of my family. Do or die. That's what it is. Damn it. Try me. Try me, goddammit. Difficult one to call, to be honest, because of all the legends and stories surrounding both men. So let me know what you think in the comment section of a fight between Harry Spires and Tonga. Also on my last Tonga video, a lot of people raised the question, well, what about Tonga versus some of the top MMA fighters? Which is a good question, because not all MMA fighters would necessarily want to fight someone who would be willing to disfigure you. But let me know what you think in the comments of um, the, the top UFC fighters against Tonga, because street fighting is obviously different to MMA. You've got all those brutal tactics, the eye gouging, the biting, the groin shots. Um, it's totally different. So yeah, let me know what you think. So the legend of Tonga, Haku or Meng. I certainly believe a lot of what I hear. I certainly believe he is the real deal. There are way too many top fighters who praise Tonga. Men like Don Fry and Tank Abbott. Much like myself, uh, the fighting stuff, he had problems with you, then he had problems with you, but he never talked about any of that things. He was very humble, cool guy. Almost all of the top wrestlers rate him as the number one most dangerous guy to get into a street fight with. I do know one thing, Tonga would be the greatest friend you could ever have and your worst nightmare if you ever took him on in a street fight. So if you made it this far, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate that. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave a comment as to what you thought of the video. It's always great to hear from you all. Please leave a like as well. Uh, channel's obviously steady, steadily growing. Uh, the subscribers are rising. Uh, 55,000 coming up soon. So thank you to everyone who supports the channel. And please leave a message how you're doing. I do try and reply to as many messages as I can get through. So I will try and reply. And I look forward to seeing you all on the next video.